Hey guys, welcome to our first multiplayer series. This is a three-part series about equipable items in an inventory uh, in a multiplayer instance. It doesn't have to be multiplayer, but we're going to actually build this first in a single-player state, and then we'll transition over to multiplayer afterwards. So if you're watching this, I'm sure you're going to learn something. So let's get right to the project here. Uh, in my content, I just have a game mode that controls everything, um, a map, which is just this, what you see, and character. So I have an animation blueprint. I have a character right here, and I have some blend spaces with whatever technical assets I need here. So these are just art stuff. So, you know, your skeleton, your assets, all that's tied together in this um, single blueprint that we made here for it's just based on the character class. We added a spring arm and a camera. We set the mesh and we set our animation blueprint. Uh, all of the event graph is just mouse movements and movement inputs. Our uh, animation blueprint's actually really simple. We just have this blend movement, which is right here, our blend space. So we can essentially move our guy around, make him jog into different directions based on this axis and this axis. This axis is called direction. This one is speed. This is based on 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right. This is just based on forward vectors, or actually right. This is based on right vectors and vector velocity, and this one's based on actor velocity on the forward vector. Uh, 450 is the max walk speed. Um, these divisions don't matter, and this is just a number for interpolation time, so how long it takes to transition. Uh, if you want an example of everything, it's basically like this. Really, really simple model. Um, really simple movements, and they, they look decent enough. But anyway, the point of this thing isn't to make a nice, pretty-looking project. The point of this is to show you how I can equip different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a system where you can wear hats, and I'm going to have a system where you can change your shirts. So the first thing I need to do is actually, this is going to be outside of the editor. We're going to actually take our mesh, and we're going to edit it. So I'm going to go into the asset actions, and we're going to export this, and we're going to bring it into Blender. So for this, I'm using my skinned version of Blender 2.79. I still have not tried Blender 2.8 because I think that learning that's going to be really difficult for me. So um, I do have an add-on here, which is the... Hold on one second. It's UE4 Tools. I'll put a link in the description to the UE4 Tools. Uh, you can go to your scene tools and set your UE scale so then you don't have to worry about that in the future. Uh, I'm just going to import that FBX now that we just exported from the engine, and then we'll get started. So here I have pretty much everything I need. I have our, I have the skeleton and I have the mesh. All I need to do is cut out the shirt because I'm just going to make some modifications to the shirt and that's really it. We can select the shirt. I think the shirt is actually in, what is this? Okay, there's two halves of the shirt, right? And I can move that and it looks about like that. What I'm going to do is press P to separate these and now we have two different selections. So this is our uh, guy, we're going to want to separate this as a separate mesh, and we're going to want to separate this as a separate mesh, and that's pretty much all we need. So I'm just going to export this, just this. We'll export the selection as an FBX, and that looks like this. Just click selected objects, and then we'll name it um, character no shirt. Go ahead and export that as an FBX, and then we will take our actual shirt, do the exact same thing. Feel free to export that as an FBX, and then we'll do character or maybe even just shirt FBX. Make sure selected is turned on so you get that set up correctly. Next, we bring in our character with no shirt. We have our character skeleton selected, import, and then we'll take our other FBX, our shirt.fbx, make sure you use the character skeleton, and actually it brought in this physics asset. I forgot to go in here and turn that off. We don't really need the physics asset. Just go in here and turn off create physics asset, import, and there we go. We'll go ahead and save. We can delete this again. We can delete this physics asset. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it does have this reference. It just, just delete it. We save. We go to our character. Uh, the mesh that's in here is not current anymore, so we'll just switch this over to the character with no shirt. We'll save it, and we'll load in the shirt on its own in its own place. So an important thing we need to talk about is master pose components. I'm going to actually press Control w on my keyboard and duplicate the mesh. We'll set this to the shirt, and now we have a shirt that should be a little bit off sync but actually it looks perfect. Usually it'll, sometimes it'll be off sync. And actually we're going to, we're going to force it to be because this isn't the technical way you have to do this. I'm going to turn off the animation because we're going to actually have this master pose. This is the master pose and it's going to control all of the animation data that's held within the shirt. So I'm just going to name this real quick, hit F2, shirt. Go into our event graph and on, I think we'll do it on begin play. I think that's how it works. Begin play. Set master pose component. Uh, I think it's of the mesh. 
No, that's actually wrong. The mesh is the master. So this is essentially how it works. This is the master data, the master pose data. And then this child, this shirt is going to become the child. This shirt is going to be affected by what animation is playing on the master. So we take our shirt, our shirt will become the target. And if there's any other things to like, for example, if I have pants or if I have shoes or something, they'll also go along in this target section. So you can set it all in one big swoop using the mesh as your master. Now that we're in the game, let's check out how it works. We have our shirt, which is a disconnected mesh that is attached to our body, and it works with our animation. Next on the list, we'll create a couple different shirts. I'm just going to make two others, and then we'll color them differently, and I'll show you how I do that. Now that we have our three shirts here, we'll set different materials. Uh, I have this M body right here, and I'm actually using parameters. So these are texture parameters, not texture samples. For this instance, I think I'm going to actually set up a multiply value. And we're going to multiply a color on top of this. And if you don't know how multiplication works, uh, if you've ever used Photoshop and used the multiply blend mode, that's essentially how this is going to work. And I'm going to load this into Photoshop, or you can use GIMP, and we're going to turn the saturation all the way down so we can color this. Uh, we can color with a vector parameter. Go ahead and drop that in. And the default value of the tint should be multiplying by a pure value so that you don't have any effects. So we're going to go full white with full alpha. And I don't think alpha matters in this algorithm, but it might. After saving, now we can set our, t our shirt colors, basically. So we'll go ahead and create a material instance. We'll call this mi underscore shirt green. And then we'll duplicate this and call this mi underscore shirt blue. We want to export this material. So now we're here inside of Photoshop with this creepy UV map, and we are going to turn the saturation all the way down and try to make the shirt as bright as possible. The rest of the UVs actually don't matter too much. We're focused more so on this red. And the whiter it is, the better, but we also do want our own different values in here too. This is probably the easiest way to do it, but you could also just generate your own textures and not do the tint thing, but this is just how I'm doing it. Now we're back in here. Go ahead and import our new texture, which is the white texture we just made in Photoshop. Save. And we'll go ahead and do our material instances, and we'll set that up. Actually, both of these need set up. So just click this, go in here. We'll set our base color and just set it to that white. And now we have the freedom to tint them how we please. So this is going to be blue. Oh, that's really scary. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. We'll set this to blue, and we'll set this one to green. Oh, look at that. Anyway, inside the shirts here, I'm just going to set these manually because the way I'm going to do it is kind of You'll see. You'll see how I'm doing it. Anyway, this is the blue one. We'll go ahead and load this on right here. There's our blue shirt. Take our green color, and boom, there's our green shirt. So now you can technically see how the system's going to work. We're just going to go through here, and we're going to cycle through these, and we're going to set up these different colors within a blueprint that is going to work in multiplayer. And then we'll, we'll set up our hats and stuff too. But there's our green shirt in action, and we'll be able to drop that in dynamically. Thank you guys for watching. In the next part, we're going to talk about how to actually set up the inventory, how to set up the items, and then we'll load in some hats and stuff. See you guys next time.